Uh, how glaucoma lasers are different from each other? Today I'm, I'm going to give you a short, brief introduction and kind of warm up before next coming talks. This is my disclosure. Um, every day, new machines are brought to the market every year, so we have to know the differences between them. There is a big development observed in the technique, laser technique in retinal diseases, both in glaucoma therapy. And this is our topic today. Uh, but as I, know, as I said, we have to know the differences between them. The main difference is, of course, in wavelength or uh, in laser source the laser gives. Other differences, or they can be divided by affected tissue, the target tissue. It may be iris, it may be ciliary body, a big one mesh work, or sometimes clara. The other division is by non-invasive and incisional surgical methods. So most of them are non-invasive. We cannot do we can do them in our patient clinic. Some of them are, however, require operational room. The other point of view is uh, uh, the effect they do on tissue. It's maybe thermal coagulation or sometimes no uh, visible destruction, no tissue destruction. This method you would usually repeat. We can look at the laser therapy by the place they have in a therapeutic algorithm. They may be first line therapy, first line treatment, or second choice therapy, sometimes only a last resort procedure. So, by targeting tissue, we have lasers effective on iris, uh, very well known peripheral iridotomy by YAC laser or argon diode iridoplasty. Or effective on sclera, sometimes we use it during operation, like uh, non penetration, uh, not penetrating deep sclerectomy or travel colectomy. These are excimer, erbium, or CO2 lasers. But today I would rather focus your attention on other two groups. This is uh, lasers effective on trabecular meshwork. In this group, we have very well known and traditional ALT, which stands for argon laser trabeculopathy, and some newer methods like PLT. Titanium sapphire laser trabeculopathy, MLT, and SLT, selected laser trabeculopathy. In the second group, we have lasers effective on ciliary body. In this group, we have this incisional method, needing operation room, which is endoscopic method, endoscopic cyclophotocoagulation, called ECP. But the other two methods uh, really don't need any operation. They are non invasive, they are transclerar. The first is very well known to you. This is thermal method, TCPC, so transclerar cyclophotocoagulation. And the last one is new one, it's subliminal transclerar treatment. So historically, historically uh, laser trabeculopathy uh, uh, was evolving uh, through the years. Uh, Weiss and Witter proposed the first method in 1979, it was ALT. Then Latina in 1996 uh, invented uh, SLT, it was approved by FDA in 2001. Then came MLT, uh, scientific basics were given by Pankratov in 1990. Then first clinical data came in 2005 with approval of FDA in 2008. The newest, youngest uh, method is uh, developed by Turati in 2010 with approval in 2017, it's PLT. So, there are different devices, they use different sources of laser beam. In some uh, fields, they are similar, but generally, there are different methods uh, with argon semiconductor, diode lasers, or NDM. So, in this table, you have summarized the main key differences between uh, these methods. Uh, with ALT, the crucial point is that this is a thermal photocoagulation, it does a necrosis to, to the tissue, so this effect is. Uh, persistent and we cannot repeat this procedure. Uh, with the other two, PLT and MLT, this is, we can call it selective photocoagulation with a very limited thermal effect. So as you can see here, uh, in total energy uh, delivered to the tissue, uh, in here you can see 3,300 millijoules per procedure in opposite to SLT when only 100 millijoules per procedure, so it, the difference is big. And maybe also that's why, because of thermal effects, uh, these first two procedures we cannot really repeat. With MLT, there is not enough clinical data yet published to 
be sure that uh, it's safe to do it once again. But with SLP, it is proved that we can repeat the method. Uh, that was a nice uh, meta-analysis published this year by Google colleagues uh, summarizing uh, the publications on repeating of SLP, and it seems beneficial for patients when it's repeated. So, very important issue is also impact duration time of different type of lasers. So, uh, impact duration times results in uh, diameter of so-called heat accumulation zone in the tissue. So, with SLP, the single impact is only 0 0.004 milliseconds, which is equal to 4 nanoseconds. So, the diameter of thermal heat accumulation zone is only 1 micrometer. It is very small. Uh, and pre precisely focused. So with MLT, it's bigger. Uh, impulse, it's uh, much more longer. It's 0.3 milliseconds. So the heat accumulation zone is much bigger. It's even bigger in PLT when we have impulse of duration of uh, 5 millisecond duration. And it's quite huge in case of ALT when you can see duration time, duration is uh, 100 milliseconds. So when you compare non-invasive SLT and traditional ALT, you see the difference is 25,000 longer impulse in case of ALT comparing to SLT. So, the wider the heating zone, the more severe and unwanted thermal effect we have on surrounding tissues. So, what makes really SLT a safe and, and non-invasive procedures? Mainly, it's a uh, unique mechanism of action. Of, it's called selective thermophotolysis of melanosomes in trabecular meshwork. Melanosomes are small grains of pigment lying inside the melanocytes in trabecular meshwork. The other thing is very limited thermal diffusion, so you have no collateral tissue destruction. It's non invasive, even in electron microscope, you cannot see any damage. It also induces cytokine release and macrophages activation. Macrophages clean up extracellular debris. So it stimulates also cell division and increases the porosity of trabecular meshwork and Schlem's canal. And all above result in trabecular outfall increase uh, altogether. Maybe that's why uh, the European Glaucoma Society allows us to consider uh, laser trabeculoplasty as a uh, first initial treatment for POAG, exfoliative and pigmentary glaucoma. <coughs> The other method I would like to tell you a few words about is uh, transcellular cyclophotocoagulation. This method is very well known. It, it's old. It was invented in 1972. First, it was performed with xenon and ruby lasers, then diode. It is still used widely for alleviating pain in blind eye, for example, in eye with poor visual potential or after uh, surgical failures or we, simply where we cannot do surgery. It is a very effective method in IOP lowering, but it's burdened by plenty of side effects, you know, sometimes really serious complications. Other thing, it's not repeatable it, due to thermal destruction of the tissue. And generally, it's rather a last resort treatment. So the main complications are listed here. You can see some of them may be transient, uh, but some of them are very serious and may be permanent, like visual acuity de decrease, and even sometimes loss of the eye. So, new method was invented lately, and it's uh, growing up. It's uh, very promising. It's a completely different story. It's called subcycle, and uh, it can be performed by the same machine. Uh, what's the main difference between thermal CPC and subcycle? In subcycle case, the laser beam is uh, divided fractionated into small shots. Between these shots, you have <laughs> gaps. In this gap, the tissue has enough time to cool down. So this is non-thermal, low thermal procedure. It's called the tissue thermal relaxation time. That's why the tissue is not thermally destroyed during the procedure. Opposite to the uh, traditional method, when duty cycle is 100%, which means the power is delivered to the tissue all the time, and this is a thermal procedure. That's why there is necrosis in this method. So, what's new in subcyclo is there is no significant pain or inflammatory reaction after the session. We observe very slight reaction usually. There is no ciliary body thermophotocoagulation, so we can repeat the method. 
It induces uh, UV sclera across pathway by remodeling of the ciliary body and selectively impairs ciliary body pigment epithelium. Because of all above, uh, the method has broader spectrum of indications than the traditional uh, thermal CPC. It's not only last chance therapy in other words. So in this table, uh, I summarized for you the main differences between TCPC, the traditional method, and the new uh, subcycle method. The main difference, the key difference is the first one is thermal and photocoagulase tissue. The other is a non-thermal therapy. The wave is continuous in, first, continuous in first case and fractionated in second. So uh, the inflammation is present uh, usually in the CPC and in subcyclo and plus minus. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, but we, can, we cannot repeat the TCPC while we can repeat subcyclo with success usually. So in a therapeutic glaucoma uh, algorithm uh, given by EGS, we can see that uh, lasers we can use on different stages like a second line therapy or third line therapy. But do we really can uh, use lasers uh, as uh, equal to the first line therapy, equal to drops, equal to topical medications? <laughs> Let's have a look at this scheme showing contemporary view on uh, our glaucoma treatment these years from outpatient to clinic, uh, to, from outpatient clinic to surgery. We start with medications usually as a first line therapy. In second line, we have trabeculoplasties, uh, meaning invasive uh, glaucoma surgery, traditional surgery, and parallelly, it's subcyclo TCPC nowadays, ending with thermal <laughs> photocoagulation. But new data or new data are coming every year, new publications, and we gain some news. So very nice publications was uh, even this year. It is a light study uh, published in March this year in Lancet. It's called Selective Laser Tropiculopathy versus Eye Drops for First Line Therapy of Acute Hypertension and Glaucoma. So the main uh, take home message, the main conclusion of this study was that selective laser trabeculoplasty should be offered as first line treatment for open angle glaucoma and ocular hypertension, supporting a change in clinical practice. So maybe we should a little bit rethink our algorithms in uh, treating patients and move a little bit laser trabeculoplasty to first line therapy. It's, uh, it's now some kind of load, let's say. So, for the sum short summary, uh, we have uh, open angle glaucomas and secondary glaucomas like pigment dispersion syndrome or pigmentary glaucoma and pseudo-exfoliation glaucoma. We can use laser trabeculoplasty in these cases uh, as a second line treatment. We have now subcycle, which can be used for uh, angle closures. Uh, there is still good place for iridotomy and iridoplasty, very traditional ones. Sometimes we can, uh, however, do iridotomy in pigmentary glaucoma when we have presence of reverse pupillary block. And in very complicated cases like neovascular glaucoma or end-stage disease, we have this thermal uh, transcular CPC still. However, we can use it in selected cases in refractory glaucomas also. So finally, how to treat and what kind of laser should be used in individual patient to preserve his vision is always your decision. Thank you very much.